All right, welcome back. Episode 169, I think, of Chaotically Intolerant. Um, it's a big day today. Uh, we're going to cover the MLB trade deadline. It is 4.39. That's when we're starting the recording today um, on trade deadline day. Uh, we're going to cover the NFL. Um, the NFL is back. The Olympics. Uh, big, you know, Simone Biles, obviously the GOAT. Um, bring home gold, uh, team gold for uh, USA Gymnastics. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into it. So let's, before we get into Major League Baseball, I know there's always a ton, there's a ton of shit going on. I left the house for like 20 minutes and there was like 10 more trades um, just just like 20 minutes ago. Uh, but I, I do want to cover uh, the NFL first. Aaron Rodgers is playing in the preseason, kind of expected. Um, but this is the first week of probably what, the next five months where we will have football every single week. This is awesome. We're, we're in the best time of the year. We're in the trade deadline day and football is back and the Olympics are going on and just everything's going crazy. You have Olympic basketball you can even throw in there. Um, but I, I wanted to talk a little Olympics, I guess, because the U.S. is leading in total medals right now. We are not even close in gold, I think, um, at this very point. We are first and second in, or we are second in both silver and bronze, though. So pretty good. Go America, right? Um, I do want to talk a little Jason Tatum not getting put in the game, though. What, what the fuck's going on here, Steve Kerr? He's, he's getting a little revenge. I don't even know why he doesn't like Tatum. Tatum lost to him in the finals. Michael, you want to go hit on that? I haven't watched much uh, of the basketball. I haven't watched him swimming. I'm so caught up in the trade deadline and preseason OT, you know, OTAs and preseason football. I can't give you much on the Olympics. My rationale on the Tatum thing is Kevin uh, Kevin Durant had a massive game. Kevin Durant sort of plays that same kind of wing role as Tatum, uh, like a stretch, like a stretch four or a three. Dep- I guess depending on the personnel on the court, um, and maybe Kerr just doesn't like Jason Tatum. Explanation for the whole thing. I think, I think if I told you that. Sorry. I think if I told you there's going to be two Celtics that play in the first game against Serbia, um, you would say, oh, it's it's going to be Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, right? Like that's, you know, that would be the assumption. It was Derek White and Peyton Pritchard. No, not Peyton Pritchard. Who was it? Shit. Mm, Derek, I thought it was Derek White and Brown played. No, Jalen mm. Brown isn't on the roster. They knew him on the you're roster. Right. You're right, you're right. That's how much I've um, been watching it. Yeah. I, I've like paid a little bit of attention just because I, I love USA basketball. LeBron holding the flag, like literally looking like he's crossing the Delaware. Uh, Le- Captain America, awesome. Um, thank you, LeBron, for all of your service uh, to America. Um, Here's the go. Snoop Dogg just Snoop Dogg's like weirdly really involved in the Olympics. I also love that. Flavor flavor. Uh, yeah, that that's an awesome story. That's a great story. What he's doing. Um, but like Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg is just like on all these side quests in his life now. Like he was like, I did everything I possibly could, so I'm just gonna go and do all this weird random shit. Um, like when he's there, they were teaching him Olympic weightlifting, uh, and he's doing it with literally like a wooden bar, <laughs> and he just he goes like that. It was the funniest visual ever. He's just so skinny and tall, but he's awesome. I love Snoop. It's Drew Holiday. I, I saw the picture of him the other day, like in his, in his team USA uniform. I don't know why I thought it was Peyton Pritchard. Um, and then the NFL is back. So this is the first week until February or, you know, this is the first week of many weeks that we'll have football. We are going to have football for every single week until mid February. Um, so it's a great day. Hall of fame game. It is, am I wrong? It's Houston and Chicago. I don't I'm not even going to watch it. I, I, I might watch the first three minutes and then be like, all right, this is stupid. <laughs> I don't care about I don't care about that. I don't care about football until the last week of the uh preseason when I start drafting fantasy. Until then it's baseball, baseball, baseball. Um yep. with the Olympics, did anybody wa- has anybody watched any events? What events have we paid attention to? I, I actually weirdly watched the swimming um mm-hmm. 
the qualifiers at Lucas Oil Stadium because there was yeah. a Sarasota native who was uh, trying to qualify. Um, but I have not watched a single thing. I just kind of keep up on social media. Um, yeah. It just, I don't know. They they got to have like, it it just doesn't get me going really. Yeah. It just doesn't get the juices going for me. The uh, Leon Marchand, the French swimmer, is 22 years old, um, won the gold in the 400 medley, which is an insane event. The 400, 400 meter medley is an insane event. You have to be good at like an Olympic level at all four strokes. Um, he won gold, I believe, broke the Olympic record, but not the world record. He's French, but he attended Arizona State. Um, yeah, is also, Phelps like coaching this guy? Phelps is, Phelps Phelps is, is coaching at Arizona State. He's a traitor. Yes, he's a he's more loyal to he's more loyal to Arizona State in the country. But he was uh, Phelps was the uh, commentator during it, and he was hyped. He was hyped on this kid, twenty two years old. This is his second. No, this is his first. Um, his first Olympics, mm-hmm. he cleaned up at the World Championships in 2020. He won one, two, three, four, five, six gold medals of the World Championships. So he could be, I mean, by the time the next the Olympics guy. rolls around, he's going to be the, the guy. So kind of an interesting uh, thing to keep keep an eye on his career if you're a fan of aquatics in any way. Yeah, so good good Olympic thing. We'll, we'll keep updated every week to week. Um, but the NFL being back, Aaron Rodgers, of course, will not play in the preseason, um, which I don't really think should be a shock to anyone. Oh, I have strong from feelings on this. Incredibly <laughs> I mean, listen, him not showing up to OTAs, he, and then he's like, oh, well, they'll just say I didn't show up to a couple of days in, in June or whatever. I was like, dude, you, you just preached about – getting the riffraff out of the building and, and it has to all be about football and you go to fucking Egypt and, and you're bringing your guys in, you're taking over the New York jets. I mean, this is just, it's, it's not a shocker that the jets are just completely fumbling a situation with a great quarterback. Um, it's, it's the jet way. It's, it's the organization. It's what they do. It's, what are your thoughts, John? You're, you're a pretty strong anti Rogers guy. Did you know that? Oh, have I, have I mentioned that oh, before? I, I, I think I think maybe in our in our conversations you have in the past. Aaron Rodgers. It has nothing to do with him as a person. You can you can make your own opinions on Rodgers. Um, you're 40 years old. You sign a massive contract with the Jets. And you played what three snaps last year. Now you you spent the whole year saying stupid stuff like you know if we make the playoffs I'm coming in. I'm going to win the Super Bowl. Here's your chance now. Come in during OTAs. Set a good example for the for the young guys on the team. Um, yeah. How about start playing with the first team because you didn't play last year? This is a great opportunity if you really are going to win a, a, World, a Super Bowl with the Jets, like you said you are. It starts at minicamp. It starts at OTAs. And I hate the concept of at least – Kelsey and Mahomes and my Chiefs, they're there. Uh, if Kelsey's taking a day off or something, they're there. They're in the building. They're they're in meetings. Rogers is what gallivanting around the world, probably doing ayahuasca. I, I, I will it. say, Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey did say that it's getting harder on his body because of the travel, and he said that include. I, I'm pretty sure that travel includes going to Taylor Swift concerts. So yeah, I'm gonna hold Kelsey to that. He yeah, but he is in the building right now. But if if had if the traveling to Taylor Swift concerts is affecting his play, he needs to stop. That's not acceptable. Just as much as it's unacceptable for Rogers. Um, Here's my, my, my on that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I want I want to hear a little bit of of what Mike has to say about Rogers. But I mean, the Jets have been so comically bad for so long. It's like kind of it sort of feeds into this narrative of that the drama is greater than the actual you know, team itself. And last year, I mean, it, the whole season, the way it played out, it proved that it, there was more than Rodgers that this team needed. You know, he wasn't going to come in and be the savior. And he's should, so that should be proof that he shouldn't think he's going to come in and be the savior this year. I don't love the guy. I mean, I did for a while, you know, like he was cool. He was, you saw him everywhere, you know, when he won his first Super Bowl. Um, I think the narrative around him has changed quite a bit. 
Um, there's just been a lot of things he's done, but he kind of fits in New York. And I think Green Bay just got tired of it. And clearly the Packers, if there's one thing they do, they know how to move on with a young quarterback. It just, Ooh, yeah, you know, the difference in the organizations. Yeah, the, uh, the, the quarterback market, it just doesn't even seem like money matters anymore. They, they just say, we're going to reset the market with every single quarterback. Tua gets his deal. He gets, I think it was 212 over five. Um, and then what did, uh, who was the other guy? Not Love. Another one signed another cor- uh, big deal. Was it just Love and Love and Tua? Tua? It was just Love and Tua. Um, and then obviously Love, like, had a great, great second half of the season. He played great in the playoffs, you know? I mean, he really showed, like, okay, maybe this guy could be Aaron Rodgers. And, and I understand the backers, you know, they're saying we want to get ahead of this. Because, like, the Mahomes contract now looks like a, it's a steal. It's a fucking steal. You know, you, you sign him for 10 years, $500 million. That's a steal now compared to what it would have been if they said, you know what, we're going to wait. We'll sign him to a few more, you know, we'll add maybe a few more deals, that, uh, sign an extension, and see how he pans out. So I'm, I'm actually not hateful of the move that, that they made with Love. Um, it was a good future move. But listen. There is, I think there's just as much of a chance this thing doesn't pan out as much as it does because Mahomes, it felt like it was a little bit more of, of a guarantee. At that point, am I wrong? He had already won a Super Bowl when he signed his contract. So he's already a Super Bowl champion. He had already MVP. been in the league a couple of years. We saw that we saw the the you know showings of an actual dominant player. Like Mahomes, you know, love has not shown Mahomes levels play. He just hasn't. I mean, it's it's not even close. But again, if you're trying to get ahead of it, then then I guess I like that. I, I really don't mind that you're really thinking way ahead. So it's not as bad as as I think even me as I made it out to be in my own brain. Um, but it is. It it was like the uh, the uh, Julio Rodriguez deal in Seattle. Like look at look at how that's panned out so far. He's been their their whole lineup has been abysmal. But he signed a massive deal before he even played a full season and. Now it might be looking a little bit like, oh, I don't know, man. Um, I, I hope they don't get, you know, I, I don't wish for love to suck. But part of me is like, you know, I, I kind of hope a team gets burned on this thing just to give a gut check. Maybe Deshaun Watson, and they didn't learn from Deshaun Watson. So maybe no one will ever really learn. Well, the NFL team, with the, the media deals, you can just blow money whenever you need yeah. to. And you're going to make – there's no way an NFL team isn't profitable. And at least by signing these deals, you're saying to your fan base, all right, look, we, we did what we needed to do. We locked down our franchise QB. We made the moves we needed. And I don't, I don't think the love deal is a bad deal. I think the Tua deal is a bad deal. I think they were, they were handcuffed. They were handcuffed at that point. They, they said, are we going to find a better quarterback on the market? Probably not. Like, Tua, listen, like, Tua gets shit. I'm a fan. I'm a member of Two Anon. I was a member of Two Anon. I'm kind of distancing myself from Two Anon a little bit, um, just because of his performance kind of down the stretch and, and what we saw from them um, down the stretch. Because that team just once again, like the Miami Dolphins, they they could not survive. They could not survive in the cold water. You know, waters get a little cold. South Florida gets a little cold, or they couldn't handle it. And Mahomes is a snow game quarterback. Yeah, and, and it's the same thing with Dak. Like, when people say Dak sucks, I'm like, he doesn't suck. Like, let's not – he he's not a Patrick Mahomes. His numbers last year were very good. I think I gave him my, my MVP on in, in our article. Um, they were very good. I think he was surrounded by not an, a, a fantastic team, a not good enough team. Um, but Tua, you're handcuffed there. Are you going to say – are you going to tell your fans, we're going to find a better quarterback? Where's the better quarterback on the market right now? You know, but also going to be pissed if you don't sign him. So you're kind of screwed there at that point. But I think it was a five-year deal. So it's not horrible, in my opinion. You still have Tyreek and Jalen Waddle. And as long as you have those two, he's going to have somebody to throw to. And Mm -hmm. if while you have two elite wide receivers, you don't look down the quarterback, yeah, but you you look pathetic. Jordan Waddle, on the other hand, he was in the building for four, four years. Three years before he yeah. started, so you you would imagine that the team knows what they have with him. Um, you think of him as oh, you're signing this young guy to a long term deal after only one successful season, but he's not really 
He's not young. He, he's he's an ex, he's a veteran quarterback. He just sat behind in a rider for a few years and learned the offense. He he stepped in a few times uh, throughout those years. It's a love deal. It's, it's an educated gamble. I think yeah. it's a it's an educated gamble. Which at times you have to take that. You're not gonna have. You're not gonna. It's like the Colts Colts fans, which I personally was kind of against taking Anthony Richardson. I liked a, I liked Will Levis better. Um, quick release type of guy. Uh, but that was a really meta joke. A few people might get that one. Um, but uh, I, I didn't mind them to at least taking a shot because a lot of Colts fans are like, we can't draft Anthony Richardson because he's not a sure thing. And I was like, that's not, that's not why I didn't like him. I watched him at Florida. He was pretty raw. Maybe I would like to see maybe Will Levis in that position. But I was like, take a fucking shot. You're not going to run into Andrew Luck or Peyton Manning every single draft. You're just not. So taking a chance, an educated gamble, it's not a bad thing. I, I don't really like to hate on GMs for that. They, they didn't. It wasn't a stupid decision. Neither of them were stupid decisions. Um, I feel like we're taking away a little bit of Mike's time. Mike, give me yeah. a give me a storyline from from OTAs you've been paying attention to. Um, I'm curious about the Patriots and Matthew Judon's holdout. I always liked him with the Ravens. I'm kind of curious to see. Uh, how, you know, Gerard Mayo tackles his first kind of dramatic moment, challenge, if you will, before his, you know, well before his first season starts taking over for Bill Belichick. You've got one of your top defensive players pouting and and getting into a little spat with him on the sideline. So, you know, this is a a new era of Patriot football. doesn't seem like it's off to a great start. Yeah, and I'm hearing Jacoby Brissett is kind of looking more like the guy right now. Yeah, well, that'll be fascinating. It turned back the clock about a decade, it seems like, since he was there, you know, third string, starting the last game that Brady was suspended of the Flake Gate in 2016. And, um, boy, who would have thought eight years later he'd come back and be the starting quarterback, you know, post Brady. That would be hilarious if I went back to that time and I told someone, hey, Jacoby Brissett's going to be starting for the Patriots in 2024. He will be, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen in he's, between. Right. He's going to be the starter. He's going to lose, you know, uh, he's going to be third string. Then he's going to go to a bunch of teams. Brady will retire. Belichick will retire. Brissett will come back. Lead we'll, the Colts to the playoffs. Almost. So yeah. Beat, Cleveland, beat Cleveland the Kansas Washington. City Chiefs in Kansas City over Patrick Mahomes. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Let's, I think we're good on football. That's a good little stopping point. We're gonna obviously we're gonna have so much more to talk about kind of down the stretch. I think next week we'll do a real football preview because you know preseason will be starting. Let's jump into baseball. Um, the the Padres Tanner Scott trade six player deal in that trade. Um, so it's Tanner Scott Brian Hoeing um, for Robbie Snelling Adam Mazur Graham Pauly and Jay Bash- Bashirs Bashirs yeah Bashirs. Um, so a lot of big moves in the last week. Um, Jazz Chisholm was one of the big ones for the Yankees. Um, major league players think he is the most overrated player in baseball, although he did hit two home runs, I think the other night. So, you know, proving him wrong a little bit. One was off a position player, but yeah, all right. It counts. It counts. Yeah. It counts because a lot of guys get retired by position players. So I will say that that's it's not, uh, it's not as much to sneeze at as it used to be. That's true. Um, I think one of the big ones, uh, the big storylines are the Rays, just completely selling everything off. It's a complete and utter fire sale over there, which I think we were kind of talking about them as a question mark of of being sellers, and, and they are they seem to be the biggest sellers right now. Read my last article. That's why I picked them. Yeah, they, the Rays... They do this every every few years. Obviously, this this is, uh, I mean, probably a little more extreme than in recent years. Um, but they're doing eleven so far, eleven prospects, not counting twelve now because they traded Tyler Zuber to the Mets. That's a, a twelve prospects. A team that you know develops players well. They scout better than almost anybody. If they're bringing in 11 prospects or 12, they, a few of them are really going to pan out, um, especially pitching prospects. They seem to be able to turn anybody 
that can throw a baseball into a usable piece, if not like a starting candidate. Buy stock in all these guys now um, because it's gonna they're gonna probably be with, in the majors within the next few years. I think a lot of them uh, either major league ready or uh, ETA like 2025, 2026. So they're doing a great job. Yeah, I, I was hearing Fairbanks is going to be staying now. They're, they are not going to be dealing Pete Fairbanks, which is one of their big pitching pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, they're they're just I, – I was hearing uh, Willie Adamas would be gone. Um, a, a lot of their big pieces. Let me let me just go look at their roster. I can't remember the names that they were talking about. Um, Mike, it looked like you had something. Well, it's not there. Willie Adamas. He's on the Brewers. but Not Willie Adamas. Um yeah, well, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I hate that this is even a thing in baseball that some organizations either have to or feel like they have to have this philosophy where they're, I mean, yeah, okay, they're in a rebuild, but they're never not in a rebuild. Even when they were in the World Series, they were in a rebuild both times. They, they have this insanely small window. It's just embarrassing, I and mean, they're just kind of becoming a farm team for so many other teams in the league. Primarily the Dodgers, I guess the Andrew Friedman connection makes sense. I mean, they, they gave Ahmed Rosario up for nothing. Guys hitting over 300. You know, do the Dodgers really need another guy who can help? I mean, it's it's absurd. And yet the Rays managed to stay competitive because they are good at doing what they do. So that's to their credit. But I, I would just love one time. I mean, baseball should almost mandate them to have to go all in one year or not, you know, they have a limit on how many guys that they can trade off because they're, what are they, three, four games out of the wild card chase and they're in a fire sale when you know that they they probably have a good enough roster to at least get in. Now, I'm always I'm always under the belief that the Rays are never truly good enough to win a World Series. This, this philosophy, this money ball thing, whatever you want to call it, it never produces a championship. That's why Oakland's never won. That's why Tampa's never won that. You know, middling teams like Minnesota and Milwaukee probably aren't ever going to win. Hold on. Oakland's never won under Moneyball. I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I mean. I, yeah. obviously I just want to make sure. I mean, I know you know. They but... won in the, in the 80s. I, I, I'm not saying they've never, ever won. The Twins won in 91. But this sort of the way the, the, the economic landscape of baseball is now and sort of this, you know, yeah. So the thing with a team like Minnesota is they're constantly in this middle ground. They refuse to kind of start over. Tampa is kind of perpetually starting over and yet they're good but their ceiling is only going to be so high so i i mean i'm not shocked by this and you know hey there's a bunch of teams that are just like vultures picking off the carcass of the rays at this point um and then somehow the rays very well can end up wasting a playoff spot that could be better suited to a team that may be able to make a run who knows because the rays have never been able to go all the way and i believe there's a reason for that yeah, I have uh, Yandy Diaz, Brandon Lau. I'm also seeing uh, Josh Lowe as a possible trade um, piece, although when this is released, you'll we will know what happens. Um, I don't expect him to go that far. Uh, I, I, I don't, don't expect so? – no, I don't think Yandy Diaz, Lowe, or Siri are going to get moved. In, fa- in fairness to the Rays, you've got Shane McClanahan, Shane Boz, Drew Rasmussen, and Jeffrey Springs all coming back. So next year, they're going to have an extremely strong starting rotation. But they could, they will probably contend for a playoff spot right away next year. They've got Xavier Isaac. Um, I think, was it, was it Chandler Simpson? Um, and was that right, Michael? I know Xavier Isaac yeah. Ch- Simpson. Sounds right to me. It's not Wander Franco. I know that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Franco would be interested in that young prospect. He comes back. <laughs> Wonder Franco back from prison. They're going to compete next year. And if the Rays fan base would show up, this wouldn't be happening. Because when you have in past years where they secure a spot in the playoffs, in the last few weeks of the season, you know they're going to make the playoffs, and fans still aren't showing up, you you you're going to games against the Yankees so there's more New York fans. Why wouldn't they keep fan favorites around? Fan favorites of what fan? So the same fans that are complaining about them doing this all the time, go buy a ticket, go to the game, sit in Randy land if you don't want them to trade Randy Rose Arena. Um, so it's not it, even Randy land anymore. It's just land. <laughs> just the land. It's just left field. 62 landing or whatever that little nook is where Longoria hit the home run. To yeah. get them into the playoffs, yeah. 
Well, I, I think I think a lot of this is also honestly they're probably centering around the new stadium, um, and and they're trying to build the team hopefully to maybe hit that peak as soon as they move into that brand new stadium that they're going to be building, um, which you know I'll power to them right. I mean that's that's kind of smart. You know it sucks for the quality of baseball that we're going to have to see. I'm going to the Red Sox Rays game in September, and you know my girlfriend bought me tickets for my birthday. And I was like, listen, honey, I love you. Thank you. Like, I'm excited. You know, the Red Sox will be fighting for a playoff spot. But we're not going to get to see a good game, most likely. Because, you know, obviously, like, this is, you know, because she was like, oh, it's going to be an exciting game. They're going to be fighting for a playoff spot. I'm like, it's only fun when both of them are fighting. Um, Both of them are good. Um, It'll still be fun, obviously, to go to the game. But, yeah, the Rays, they seem to just, this is this is the same thing every year. And, And I agree with both of you. It's. It's a little annoying. I mean, you can't have any sort of competitive team in Florida. And Florida is the home of, like, high school baseball, especially. You know, this is where so many prospects come from here in, like, Texas and California. Maybe population. Maybe it's just because Florida is summer year-round. The philosophy itself is great for the Rays, but it would only truly work if they actually said, we're not just going to have this really, they have a tiny window whenever they do this. If they actually said, okay, as soon as we get to a point where we feel good, we are going to spend, we're going to bring those guys in that will, that will truly get us over the top. Otherwise it's lather, rinse, repeat. And it's this vicious cycle. It just, you know, they're, they're in this rut and they're going round and round and round. They're spinning their wheels. It just, but I agree. I guess you need a new stadium, maybe move cities. I mean, (laughs) I don't know. I, they brought a team there, what, it's been 26 years. 98 was the first year of Rays baseball. They've been pretty good. I mean, the first 10 years were horrible. I understand that they maybe alienated some people in that time, but you, you got I mean, you got to get, you got to spend money. You got to spend some money. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, so think about, think about uh, like 2021, all right? Year before they go to the World Series, it was the COVID World Series, so, you know, who knows, you know, you, you can't get a good gauge on the team. But you go into 2021, they were the number one seed going into the playoffs that year, and they get swept by the Red Sox. Carlos Correa was out there as a free agent. Corey Seager was out there as a free agent. Chris Bryant, which, you know, if you go to Colorado, you don't – We I, I even heard the Nesson guys when I was watching the Red Sox uh, Rockies series. They were like, I don't know how you can put a good team together out here. It's mis- It's like there's nothing – there's no good things about Colorado for a baseball team. Have the Rockies done anything yet? By the way, have the Rockies done anything yet on the deadline? They, they got better because they traded Jalen Beeks away to the Pirates, so they actually did improve their team by getting rid of the worst guy to ever call himself a closer in the history of baseball. Former Red Sox. What's Ryan Jalen McMahon? Beeks. Are they going to hold on to Ryan McMahon? They probably are because, again, if you're going to go full fire sale, it's worth it. But if you're just going to trade Ryan McMahon, that's – I don't know if they're going to get enough back. Honestly, I mean, the sellers do have the leverage in this market, so it wouldn't shock me. But, I mean, when did the Rockies ever do anything that, that's right or makes yeah, sense? Held on a Trevor Story for three years too many. Just a just a horrible ownership, Dick Monfort, and uh, just a bad – it's a shame. That's actually a shame because Denver's a great sports city. Tampa, it's like they just go to the beach. But well, it's not Denver, even Tampa. It's not even Tampa. It's St. Pete. Yeah, right. <laughs> And, the, and it's like not even just ugh. Ugh. The, the Rockies are the opposite of the Rays. The Rays put together, put on a decent product every few years. Can't get anybody in the stadium. The Rockies can put complete dog crap on the field and still fill up the stadium. They're running like a, a gorgeous. Yeah, they're running. A, it's like a, a snacks and parking business disguised as a baseball team. <laughs> why would they? Why would they do anything if people keep coming to the stands? It's the exact opposite of the Rays. It's it's a very odd phenomenon. But Let's, um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, but it now you know might be time to look at what some of these actual moves mean to these teams too, because uh, you know, like the Tanner Scott move, the Padres. I don't think they're going to catch the Dodgers in the regular season. I mean, they they go into they have two games set with them starting tonight. They're six and a half back. You figure even if they take both games, it's four and a half. But they have in the back of their minds, they know that they can beat the Dodgers in a postseason series. They have a really rock solid bullpen now with uh, Morahan, Estrada, Suarez, Tanner Scott in the back end. I mean, they're really 
give San Diego credit. They're going for it. Well, of course, they've gone for it before. It hasn't always worked. But um, they're kind of saying to L.A., like, hey, we're we're here. We know we can beat you even if we're a wild card. We don't care if you win the division. We just got to get in. Um, and I like the Royals getting Paul DeYoung, Lucas Erceg. Eh, great. Right? Who else? Uh, Michael Lorenzen. And Hunter Harvey so far. And Hunter Harvey. Well, just back to the Padres thing real quick. The, how many years can the Padres go all in for? Like this? So they've traded their number two, their number three, their number four, their number five, their number eight, their number 12, and their number 24 prospects. There are three relief pitchers, uh, Scott, Hoeing, and uh, Adam. They've just completely eviscerated their um uh, system and AJ Prawn has said for years he doesn't care about prospects really. Well, I'm not saying out loud, but showed us through his moves he doesn't care about prospects. I mean, how long can they do this for? I feel like they've been going all in for quite a while now. Three, four years consecutively they're they're buying. They've got it they've got to win at some point. If you keep pushing the chips in, you're just going to run out of chips. They're not going to let you sit at the table anymore if you keep pushing the chips in. Eventually, eventually you have to fold at some point. Like, you can't just keep going all in on pocket aces because it's fun and you end up losing every single time. And it's not even pocket aces. It's like pocket tens, pocket eights. And you're going in against pocket kings, pocket aces with the Dodgers. So let's stay with the Dodgers. They get a power arm and, and Kopech, and, and he's struggled. He's struggled with control. But I think they're, the Dodgers definitely feel like the team that maybe they can get him under control. They get Edmund, a good utility guy who's coming back in August. He's been hurt all year, but he's going to be really valuable for them. Um, as a utility guy, you know, you can move him anywhere. Um, and James Paxton actually sent back to Boston, who we lost in free agency. Um, they did, uh, He actually beat Boston, and then they designated him for assignment. Um, the Dodgers got... Moises Boliviar, uh, 17-year-old from Panama. So, um, they're, I mean, I, I guess the big question is because they, I, I put something out on threads. I said, like, the, the Dodgers' greed doesn't stop because they, you know, went out and got Kopech and all that stuff. And Ridiculous. Dodgers fans are like, what are you talking about, greed? I'm like, lighten up. It's we develop play. players. Of course, you buy 15 of them. You only need to develop, like, two or three to make it a good round out the team, right? It's Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, if if Dave Roberts doesn't get it done, it's he's done, right? Like it, this this has to be it. Like they can't, you can't keep Dave Roberts if they don't at least make a World Series appearance this year. Is that probably? Fair? So. I mean, that's, I mean, I I thought, think that's pretty fair. I yeah. thought Cora might have been an option, but the Red Sox extended him. But then maybe the Dodgers do something where they make a big trade for him. They do a Belichick style. Oh, brother, that's not happening. Alex um, Cora, um, but yeah, I mean, you talk about a manager being spoon-fed a really amazing team. Since he took over in 2016 with this ownership, they have had loaded rosters every single year, and they still have not won, in my mind, a real, a legitimate full-season World Series title. Uh, and they have to know that, right? Like, you have of to course. be. I get they're, they're out in the media, and they're celebrating their, their World Series. But inside behind closed doors they have to be telling him listen man like you have not gotten it done for us the the ones that count that truly do count you know yeah, the ones that result in a parade and a, and a one, big, yeah, that, you know. all that stuff and even then one world series i don't care how it was one world series with the rosters that they've given him is unacceptable to me i mean that that is and yeah and i saw I was an owner i'd be saying that well, and uh, yeah, and I saw a little clip from a podcast. It was Kenley Jansen talking to Mookie Betts, and they're saying, well, you know what? It was so hard, and it was challenging. Right? It was challenging for every team, but it doesn't matter. It, it could have been the most, you know, they could have had to play on hot coals. It's still, you know, like someone's going to win it. And that year, a lot, of the, a lot of the obstacles that have felled up the Dodgers, you know, fouled them up in the postseason – were removed. They don't have that pressure. They don't have to deal with the media as much. They don't have to deal with the rigors of injuries in a full season. And they didn't play a road game, like a real road game in the playoffs. It was right, the, the right. And and again, you know, sixty games, and then just start. I mean, they might as well have just started in a postseason. You know, said like we're just going to pick the sixteen teams. We're going to play it out. Uh, and you know, 
So, and, and, and other teams, you know, being able to make trades to catch up to them that year, that didn't happen. I mean, there are a lot of things that actually, I think, gave the Dodgers, specifically the Dodgers, maybe a team like the Yankees too, an inherent advantage that season that they wouldn't normally have. The players, of course, they're going to say, but it was hard and we were away from family and all that. And it was, what was the whole thing? It started like July 24th. I, listen, and I won't deny that it wasn't hard on those. Yeah, I, I'm of sure it was. Still have yeah, to win. Of course it was. Talk to the guys in the NBA bubble. Some guy went out to get food <laughs> towards the end of the NBA bubble, and he, they, you know, he had to isolate for two more weeks. It was like the final day or something like that. So, like, I don't want to say, you know, I agree it was difficult on them, but you can't look at that at that World Series in that season as the same as the other 117 or however many World Series they played. Right. Right. And then you can, you've seen what's happened to the Dodger roster this year with, you know, injuries and pitching them. They have what seems like endless, endless prospects. I mean, look at the guys they've called up this year that have performed for them. Guys like River Ryan and Justin Robleski and Landon Knack. Um, You know, they've lost Emmett Sheehan and Kyle Hurd and Tony Gonsolin and Walker Bueller and Dustin May. I mean, it's, I mean, they could, they have like three rotations worth of guys, understandably that, those guys, you know, guys get injured and it's contracts are up and all that. And they get Otani next year. Like we're forgetting that they don't even have to go out and add a starting pitcher. They're going to probably let Bueller walk, I would think, or Kershaw could retire. Right. And, and they're going to get Otani as a pitcher. Like, and they're telling me, oh, they need, but they need this guy, but they need, I don't know where are, it's like, you, I mean, there, there's really should be a moratorium on certain teams like the Dodgers making moves. I don't care what anyone says about other teams spend and all that. I mean, what they've done is talk about resetting the market. You were talking about that with football. It's kind of what they've done with baseball. Ahmed, Ahmed was, he, he also, for the second time. Second and, year in a row. Uh, yeah, just, second year in a row, they go out and get him. Uh, he's a, again, a good infield utility guy. So they just. 307. Huh? He's hitting 307 in the 70 something games. Yeah. It's literally endless. I mean, you said it, you said it perfectly. It is, it is endless for them. This year has to be the year. I mean, well, yeah. And I find it comical because think, look at some of the guys they've actually had to get rid of to make room for. They get rid of James Paxton, who was what, eight and two. Okay. And he wasn't always great, but pretty damn good season. They get rid of Ryan Yarborough. Talk about a, a guy worth taking a flyer on, former Royal, former Ray, you know, he had a couple rough outings. Let's cut bait with him. I wouldn't be shocked if they cut bait, you know, if they picked up another reliever, had they picked up, let's say Tanner Scott, maybe they get rid of a guy like Joe Kelly or an Evan Phillips, who's been there and done a good job. I mean, Evan Phillips had a rough month, but like, who do you, who do you get rid of? And then they, they sign Rosario because Miguel Rojas is out and Betts is out. And obviously Freeman dealing with a, a serious situation, all that, but like, what happens when those guys come back? Then what? And then, yeah. then what happens? Do you just get rid of the guys on the bench? Do you get rid of, like, your backup catcher just so that you have an extra? Like, what is it? You know, when does it end? And so. Well, it looks like they're going after Jack Flaherty, too. Just give me the rundown on the O's. Let, let's, you know, how are you? How are you? How confident are you right now? They, they, didn't do, they didn't make any of the big moves that we were predicting. So people were saying it was, like, from what I was reading, the Tarek Skubal move like a done deal and then they were going to bring in another power bat so zach Eflin is a i guess what you'd say is a second tier uh play target behind the crochets the flaherty's um and the scoobles and then they also brought in trevor rogers but they gave up connor norby and kyle stowers i think that's too much now, granted, norby is blocked by herstead and colton kowser and gunner I think you're giving up too much for a guy who doesn't strike anyone out um, and also doesn't have what you like an eye popping ERA. He's a 4.5 ERA, 85 strikeouts, 105 innings. So you would consider him a back of the like a back of the rotation piece. Um, where's the where's the big move? What's your take on that, Michael? I, I I can't believe they gave up both Norby and Stowers, even if Norby is blocked. That's a lot for a guy who's two and nine and has pretty league average numbers. I would have been okay if they gave that up for Tanner Scott. I'm not sure if I'd have been okay with like a Flaherty, but if they had offered that up for like a Garrett Crochet with a big upside, absolutely. You said it great, John. I don't think they made the big move. I think they needed one really big move. I think they still need bullpen help. 
I mean, at Kimbrel, you can't trust. Cano's not a closer. Dominguez has been good for a couple outings, but he's had an up and down career. Um, I mean, I don't mind getting Rogers, but to give up what they did for a back of the rotation guy who's kind of on par with like Dean Kramer, I don't see the real upside there. I, I'm I'm very surprised at that move. I know they're not going to get Scooble. I, I wouldn't mind to see them getting a Flaherty or Crochet at this point, but now having given up Stowers and Norby, now what do you have to give up? How deep? Are you going to go into the farm system to kind of go all in this year? And you're probably going to lose Corbin Burns next year. He's a Boris guy. I doubt he comes back to Baltimore. The only thing they have left, I mean, if you're going to make the big move, it's Jackson Holiday Because you've, yeah. given, you've given away now the two pieces that you were considering packaging as part of the big deal. And you got fleeced, in my opinion. Yeah. I, mean, the, I think, personally, the Mariners have won the deadline so far. You brought in a true uh, back of the bullpen guy. Uh, Yimmy Garcia is a legit closer. Turner move. I love the Turner move. The Turner, the, the it, great, great uh, depth back. And then you're bringing in a Rosarena, who mm-hmm. maybe a Rosarena needs to change, change the scenery. Um, I think so. Well, he was complaining. He was, he was, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, that sounds like I'm being an asshole about it. He wasn't happy in Tampa, and There's honestly, I couldn't be. really blame him for it. He was, you know, what what is there in Tampa? I mean, if you're a competitor and you want to win, and you're you're stuck in Tampa and you you feel like you're a star, you know, what is there for you? There's nothing there for you in Tampa. So um, he wanted out. He got, you know, he got what he wanted. But I, I let's. I, I do want to talk a little bit about the Red Sox. Um, this is the most interesting part of the deadline. They traded for Danny Jansen, Great and move. the Red Sox. Yeah, they, so they actually played the Blue Jays. It got rained out. This. They have to make up a game in September against the Blue Jays. Danny Jansen was the batter. What I think he was the batter. He was. He was. He was mid at bat, batting for the Jays against the Red Sox. So they, he could be the first player to ever play for both teams in a single game. What are they going to do? Are they going to make him stand behind the plate with a bat and swing while he he's... Just strike out on purpose for his old team or something? <laughs> you know, like... I would love that. He, he, just, starts, he just starts dropping strikes. He starts then he, wait, he, gets on, he, he switches his jersey real quick, runs over to the other side. Like Paul DeYoung, <laughs> when he got traded today, he just ran over to the other dugout. It was like, okay. That's but happened a few times, I think. I can't remember. There was a big name. Ichiro. Ichiro did it. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Red Sox, I'm seeing now Luis Renjifo is, is close. No, it's 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 breaking, I guess, close to being done. So they're an infield. I mean, a utility guy that can play everywhere. Let me look this up. I, I love them. Yeah. I really like the pitching that they added. Um, they – uh, Andrew Bailey has been fantastic with our rotation this year. He has really revamped it. I mean, we weren't, that was going to be the issue for the Red Sox, like the major issue. And besides that kind of, um, stretch, you know, coming out of the all-star break where they struggled, they've been really great. Tanner Houck has really found his footing here. But really the bit, the big problem has been Winkowski and, uh, what the fuck's his name? Uh, the guy that kind of pot, like pushes the ball out a little bit. I can't remember his name. I don't know why I can't. Um, but he's our back end of the rotation guy. We traded Nick York for Quinn Priester, which a lot of Red Sox fans were upset about. He was probably going to be gone in the Rule 5 draft at the end of the year anyways, so at least get something for him. Priester was a former first-round pick. He's 23, so they're betting on Andrew Bailey. Andrew Bailey probably had a hand in saying, hey, go get this guy. I want to try and revamp him because, you know, you never know with a, with a guy like that. Um, Priester, here it says he had a 3 one ERA in AAA. Not bad. 9.6 strikeouts per nine um and then going to get lucas sims as well um in cincinnati um you know again something i'm pretty happy with he's uh 357 era and 43 appearances i still think they need to add some pitching depth um especially in the bullpen and they do need to add a middle infielder someone you know i i really want to see rafaela out in center field um they're saying story might be able to come back by like mid-september and be available for a playoff push. They were expecting Hendricks to come back but um, in, in August, but that's being pushed back now. Um, Tristan Casas is also starting his rehab today. So you're, you know, trade deadline day, that is perfect. You're, you're already seeing a big name coming back, getting a big name there. So um, I still want to see them add someone. I would really love to see them add like a 
kind of a middle of the rotation guy really bolster the the rotation I'm, I'm pretty happy with the Sox so far you know this is this is encouraging Breslow is buying in basically and I thought he wasn't gonna buy in this year because he wasn't confident they could make a deep run but maybe he is confident. all right and so then, uh Yandy Diaz latest report says Diaz is the remaining target for the Astros the Mariners Pirates and Yankees are also in on Diaz I just said I don't think they will trade Diaz. He would be a great fit for the Astros. Astros don't have a reliable first baseman. I think they they, they uh, Diaz made a brave, and they haven't really found a piece that fits there yet. Yeah, they they had to eat that contract too. That was that was really bad for them. Um, well, nobody wants to see the Astros add guys to their roster at this point. I mean, uh, but you know. Um, yeah, and, I, and yeah, John Singleton's yes. been pretty good for them, uh, honestly. But you know, at these teams they 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 pick nets. So, yeah, I think he has end up in Houston, and I let's, hope Larry let's talk doesn't. About end the Astros up. a little bit. Yeah. Kikuchi, I thought they got fleeced on Kikuchi. Yeah, I gave did up. Too. They just gave up way too much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, but they're desperate. They want to keep that ALCS streak alive, and the AL's so weak that division, especially, is terrible. I mean, I. If ever there was a year to kind of push your chips in, why not? Yeah. Um, I, I Kikuchi is actually, some of his numbers are like career highs right now. And he's struggled in the last eight, but he's definitely, I think he's going to find a little bit more of a way. I think I think a lot of guys will struggle too on these sucky teams just because of the environment. Like it just sucks to be on a bad team. Getting pushed to a different team, I think it'll give him a little bit more of a life. I just, again, I think they gave up way too much. I mean, the guy they gave up has been up and down. Um, one, one of their pitchers has had like a 2-3 ERA. Like he's been pretty damn good all year, and they gave that away. I would Do they care, though? Care about the future. Well, well, yeah, the, that's the but the future for them, I mean, the window is is still closing. I mean, with two they getting a little older, um, some of their moves in recent years haven't necessarily worked out. Braden is probably go, is going to be gone. Um, so I think they're, they're just trying to keep the window alive another year or two. I wouldn't be surprised if they made a big free agency move this offseason to try to get one or two uh, more cracks at it. You're right. They, they did overpay. The question is, are they willing to overpay to meet their goal? And that may have been the, their whole plan is to offer more than anybody else is because they're desperate to keep their window open. Yeah. It was a uh, Jake Bloss. Jake Bloss they gave up. That was the guy I really liked and they, you know, gave him up. But again, maybe they just don't give a shit. Um, they just, they did add, uh, what's his name? Caleb Ferguson as well. Um, 28 years old, kind of, you know, older guy, 5.13 ERA. So, you know, May, again, maybe it's one of those guys they can kind of bolster a little bit, help add. Um, and uh, let's talk Yankees. Talk about those damn Yankees. Adding Jazz Chisholm. Um, you know, I, I always, I knew they, I think everyone on the planet knew they needed another bat besides Judge and Soto in that lineup. You know, I, I, I equated it to, you know, po- poverty with a Gucci belt, basically. That, that lineup was poverty with a Gucci belt. I, I didn't really like the Jazz Chisholm ad. I mean, they added like a 246 bat. It's not like he was, maybe, I can't remember the exact average, but it was around 240, 250. That's not a bat you want to add to bolster your lineup, in my opinion. If you want like a, and the Yankees are not also the team to add a cool guy. Jazz is cool. Jazz, now he can't even have a fucking beard. He can't even have long hair. The Yankees are not cool. Stop bringing cool people over there. Like when they, that's all, you know, that's like the most. They're like, oh. A green belt over Dugo. Kiner Falefa going to Pittsburgh. Yeah, and I'm with you. Mark Leiter had a nice start to the year. Not a big impact move for the Yankees. I worry that they might get Flaherty. Um, I worry that the Dodgers might get Flaherty or the Astros. I'd like to see that, and then I got a uh, jet, but I'll leave you with this. You got a couple teams in the Central that have been pretty quiet. The Guardians got Lane Thomas, but they need a starter. I'm really surprised we haven't heard their name in there. And the Twins also very much in contention, have not made a move. Now, maybe it might be harder for those teams to pry Flaherty because it's a division rival, but those teams have clear starting pitching needs. They're very much in the hunt. Most teams are in the hunt in the American League because it's very, very down this year. Um, and yet, all we hear, Yankees need this, Dodgers need this, Astros need them, Twins and Guardians, they don't need 
that, I mean, it, I'm, so hats off to the Mariners because they went out and made a lot of moves. They had a horrendous offense. You know, this collapse that they've had was pretty inevitable. I'm glad that they've made some moves to try to hang with the Astros. But if you're Cleveland and Minnesota, what have you been sitting here doing the whole time? I mean, yeah, Lane Thomas is a nice pickup, but you got to get an arm. I mean, I can't imagine they don't swoop in and try to at least get a crochet or flarity here at the end. I know yeah. you got to get out of here. Yeah. I think we're going to wrap. We'll just wrap it up here. Um, and also chafing to the Rangers that happened at three. Kenny Powers. All right. On the move. I do like to see the Rangers uh, adding a little bit. Um, yeah. Because I, I love when the Rangers are good. It's fun. Um, but make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, maybe drop in a comment about your favorite move. You know, whatever. Um, and we will see you next week. We're going to do. Uh,